Does anyone here know people who are diabetic? Can I see your hands, please? If you know someone who's diabetic. Okay, so basically everyone in this room, right? Even though you know people who have diabetes, what you may not know is the history of how the world used to treat it. We used to treat diabetes right up until the 1980s with insulin harvested from farm animals, like pigs. It used to take pancreases from 23,500 farm animals to make just one pound of purified insulin. Eli Lilly, an American pharma company, purchased pancreases from 53 million animals every year. Can you imagine all these frozen pinkish blobs loaded onto train carriages and taken to Eli Lilly's factory to be processed? The entire endeavor was so inefficient that the world was constantly on the verge of running out of insulin. Clearly, something had to change. And it did. After several years of research, scientists figured out how to make an insulin, human insulin, not pig insulin, more efficiently in a different way. And now, companies all over the world make insulin in this new manner without extracting it from animals. In fact, India's very own Biocon is the world's fourth largest manufacturer of insulin. No pigs involved. It's a story about the triumph of engineering and ingenuity, transforming an old process to address a huge, urgent problem. Oh, and that factory where Eli Lilly harvested insulin from pigs, now it's a parking garage. Let's talk about another example of triumphant innovation. How many of you own one of these? It's a mobile phone, so my guess is pretty much everybody in the room does. We all know about this piece of technology. India crossed one billion mobile phone subscribers in 2016. And the mobile revolution is still underway. It's an example of leapfrog innovation. Millions of people accessing the internet, financial inclusion, e-commerce, completely bypassing the need for landline phones and even desktop computers. That's what leapfrog innovation means. It's a glimpse of the future happening here in India today. These devices are so ubiquitous, so widespread, that they're no longer called mobile phones or even smartphones. They're just phones. So which sector is ripe for this kind of upgrading next? For the kind of leapfrogging we've seen in biomedicine and telecommunications in the past? I'm here to tell you that it's a sector which is very close to each and every one of us. The food sector, or more specifically, meat. But why would meat need an upgrade? Just like with insulin from pigs, it has to do with the challenges of the underlying process used to create it. The basic truth is that raising animals, feeding crops to those animals, and then eating parts of those animals is just a very inefficient way to feed the world. This is a simple fact of biology, no matter how many factories we put up and how much we try to optimize the process. Chicken, which is the most widely consumed animal takes in nine calories of crops, such as soya, wheat, and corn, for every one calorie it gives us in the form of meat. Those eight extra calories could be used to feed humans directly, and chicken is one of the most efficient meats. I think we can all agree that a better food production system is particularly important in India. We face tremendous challenges of malnutrition, such as anemia and stunting. They affect the health and well-being of our population and endanger our country's future. We are a young and growing people. We need to secure our health and our children's in better ways. Unfortunately, the challenges of the current system of meat production don't stop there. All the steps involved in growing all those crops, feeding animals, raising them and slaughtering them, they're incredibly hard on the planet, too. Animal agriculture contributes more to climate change than emissions from all planes, 
trains, automobiles, the entire transportation sector combined. And growing chickens releases 40 times more carbon dioxide per calorie of protein than lentils. This is why United Nations scientists have stated that raising and slaughtering animals for food is one of the major causes of the world's most pressing environmental problems. And the situation is certainly pressing. A 2018 report from the International Panel on Climate Change says that we have just 12 years to deal with climate change before we are past the point of no return. What's more, a historic collection of leading scientific experts called the Eat Lancet Commission concluded this month, after three years of study, that we have to reduce our meat, eggs and dairy consumption. This is imperative for public health and planetary health. Honestly, I could go on all day, but I have just 18 minutes. Despite all these reports conclusively stating that we need to rethink our food system, that we need to reduce our consumption of meat. The world needs protein, and people like meat. So the demand for meat keeps growing to record levels. And much of the growth in this demand over the next decade is going to come from emerging markets like India. One way or another, India is going to determine the future of the global food system and its implications on the planet. This leaves us with the urgent question. How are we going to nourish 9.7 billion people by the year 2050, one-sixth of whom will be Indian, through better production systems, through systems which don't have the same impact on climate change, on biodiversity, on public health, and on scarce natural resources? How do we leapfrog industrial animal agriculture in emerging economies and provide consumers and producers with better alternatives? Putting out more reports which advise us to reduce our consumption of meat is not going to be enough. Clearly, just like with insulin in the early 1980s, something has to change. The good news is that change is already coming. Scientists and entrepreneurs all over the world are working around the clock to address these problems. They know that most people eat meat in spite of the way it's produced, not because of it. They know that meat is simply animal tissue. It's made up of amino acids and lipids and minerals and water. So they're focused on creating new production methods for the same meat, with the potential to upgrade the food supply and fulfill global demand. Take the two visionary startups, Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat, for example. They use food science to create plant-based meats, bypassing the animal entirely. Their delicious burgers are made of ingredients like peas, beetroot, coconut oil, and potato starch. But they taste, smell, and sizzle. They even bleed, just like their animal-based counterparts. And by switching the source of protein for meat from animal to plants, they only release a tiny fraction of the greenhouse gases and only use a tiny fraction of the land, water, and energy compared to conventionally raised meat. And plant-based meats aren't the only transformative foods out there. Dr. Uma Valetti, a Mayo Clinic-trained cardiologist from the small town of Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh, is one among several entrepreneurs creating meat by growing it directly from cells. This incredibly exciting technology is called cell-based meat, or clean meat, because it's better for the environment, just like clean energy is better for the environment. Producing cell-based meat involves taking a small sample of cells and growing animal tissue from it. It's just like farming those cells directly, instead of going through the wasteful process of farming, feeding, and slaughtering animals. Dr. Valetti applied the lessons of regenerative medicine to start the first-ever cell-based meat company called Memphis Meats in the United States. In 2016, they made the first-ever cell-based meatball. Now there are many companies all over the world following in their footsteps and racing towards market readiness, with meat ranging from pork to chicken to fish to shrimp to beef, really ready to fulfill every market demand. At large scale, the cell-based meat production method will look very similar to a product we all know and love today, beer. So very soon, 
you could go down to your friendly local meat brewery and sip on a cold beer while eating clean meat made by a cardiologist from Vijayawada. Now, as these pioneers continue on their path to fulfilling the demand for tasty, nutritious meat, the world has sat up and taken notice. Last year, the United Nations awarded Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat with their highest environmental honor, the Champions of the Earth Award, and called them plant-based meat revolutionaries. Last month, the Impossible Burger won the Best of the Best Award at the Consumer Electronics Show. That's right, a burger won an award that's usually reserved for the hottest new TVs and, of course, mobile phones. Technology titans such as Bill Gates and Richard Branson have invested millions in Memphis Meats, with hundreds of millions more flowing into the sector from visionary venture capital firms like DFJ and Google Ventures. Perhaps most importantly, food and meat industry behemoths such as Cargill, Tyson Foods and Nestle are investing in the sector of plant-based and cell-based meats. The CEO of Tyson Foods, which is America's largest meat company, said in an interview with Bloomberg, if we can grow meat without the animal, why wouldn't we? And it's not just the private sector. Governments have started to get involved in a big way. The Canadian government is investing over $150 million in plant-based protein processing facilities. Canadian politicians say they're gearing up for total world domination in the supply of plant protein. They expect to create thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in return on investment. Now, as a self-respecting Indian who has great pride in our agricultural heritage, this sounds like a challenge that our government should be taking on as well. And you know what? That may not be too far away. After seeing the international momentum in plant-based and cell-based meat, the CEO of India's premier policy think tank and one of the country's most powerful people, Mr. Amitabh Kant, wrote an op-ed in the Times of India. He said, if only 20% of the world switched from animal-based meat, it would free up 12% of total fresh water, free 400 million hectares of land and reduce 960 megatons of CO2 emissions. In short, it would be a significant upgrade. I agree with Mr. Khan. And with India at the forefront, I believe we can do even better. All this exciting progress that's happening all over the world is just a tiny morsel. It's an appetizer of what's coming. Imagine a future where the world's protein and micronutrient needs are met and our population's well-being doesn't compete with the planet's. Where meat is produced efficiently and sustainably without tremendous strain on the climate and natural resources. Where plant-based meat and cell-based meat is so ubiquitous, so widespread, that it's just called meat. Just like human insulin is now called insulin, and mobile phones are now called phones. Imagine a future where people all over the world can go into a restaurant or supermarket or the corner store and buy the kind of meat they want, whether it's made from peas or soya or millets or from chicken or fish cells. Now imagine a future where India is at the center of this transformation. A future where our farmers, and not just Canada's, are growing and supplying the world's plant protein. Our innovators and entrepreneurs like Uma Valetti, are creating tasty, nutritious meats right here at home. And Indian business is contributing to and benefiting, not, benefiting from the new global food system. That future is taking root today. It's taking root in rooms just like this one all over the country, in our universities and cradles of innovation, where young Indians are choosing to study plant biology and tissue engineering in our fields, where Indian farmers are growing the raw materials for the future of meat, and in our boardrooms, where executives are investing in these new production methods. Plant-based meat and cell-based meat is the new mobile, the new leapfrog technology where India will lead the way. This is the healthy, sustainable, upgraded future of food, and India will play a central role in its transformation. Thank you. Thank you.